Yo, what's going on guys? Freaky Trades here, bringing you another new weekly stock watch list. Before we get started though, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. But with that much more being said, let's go ahead and take a look into the Sunday stock watch list, starting off with earnings week. Um, going into earnings week, there really isn't too much going on that I have an eye out for that with anything that I really like to trade. We have CRM. I know we used to trade that back in the day, so that could be something to keep an eye out for with Salesforce. Chewy is a stock that is brought up every now and then, so that's something that I'm sure we could touch bases on. Um, besides that, and I'm really seeing anything else, Ulta and Lulu, Lululemon, Ulta Beauty, those stocks being really volatile when it comes to earnings week. So maybe at some point we could find an earnings play on that. I personally haven't traded any of those two stocks in a while, or I think even ever, if I'm being honest. Maybe Lulu, but not as, uh, anything on Ulta just because of the contracts and the lack of liquidity and the spreads in those contracts usually um, don't provide anything docu could be something to keep an eye out for but these are all stocks that i don't normally trade with anymore so pretty chill week as far as earnings week goes and it is the last month of the year guys 2024 make sure you guys are uh reaching your goals for this year and making new ones going into 2025 so let's go ahead and dive deep into the watch list here starting with es and nq you guys know i like to start off with this I'm um, going to ES and NQ um, with both indexes. There really isn't too much going on. Um, the thing to note um, between the differences on both is ES. Um, if I go to the four hour here, actually, you guys will be able to see that we are currently at all time highs. So with that being said, that is the those are going to be the levels that I'll be watching. So fit above 60, 50 and then 60, 60 are the levels that I'll be keeping an eye out for. You can see here on the one hour time frame, though, we have a trend line that we have touched off of twice now. So it is something to keep an eye out for and making sure that that trend line is either respected or if we're going to break past that going forward. So. ES is pretty straightforward as far as the downside goes. I'm not watching anything towards the downside on it unless we get below either 6020 or even 6000 on ES. Next up is NQ. If I go to the NQ chart, it's a lot simpler. Uh, not too much going on on here. But the thing to keep in mind is it has a downtrend on the four hour. You can see that we have touched off of it twice now. The second time we actually ended up breaking through late day on Friday because it was a half day. So we ended up closing early. We ended up closing above the trend line here. Um, so going forward, I'm interested to see going either going into Monday morning, not so much tonight when market opens on Sunday, but more into pre-market session tomorrow and seeing if we happen to continue and gap up with NQ or if we're in a gap down because of the trend line here that we have currently created so that is something to keep an eye out for if we happen to play to the upside i will be looking at anything above 21,000 and then 21,100 for some continuation to the upside as far as the downside goes i'm not i really don't have anything till 20,700 and then 20,400 on nq on that so that is it for the indexes and then of course everyone's favorite part of the watch list is the actual stocks themselves so pretty simple setups pretty straightforward for this week i'm not gonna not I don't have too much on the table for you guys, but the setups are pretty nice. Um, first is Apple. Now, a lot of you are probably questioning why is Apple a stock that he has on his main watch list? Well, the reason is I like playing all-time highs, and I consider myself being really good at being able to read all-time high breaks and the momentum and volatility that comes along with that. With my cat's going crazy <laughs> um with apple i will be looking at the all-time high at 238 we didn't end up breaking it halfway through the day on friday like i said friday was a half day so i will be looking at 238 for a continu continuation above that going into 239 and then 240 so um like i said for me this is an a plus setup just because it's an all-time high break and it's moving along right with es so it's going to be nice to see if this can get its own market divergence um, without the es help or i guess market sentiment help or if this needs uh, the help along with it or who knows how it's going to move right that's the really fun part about all-time highs is i think they're personally really easy to read especially if you're good at trading the volatility that is involved with it so that is the first stock I have on here. Um, the next one um, that a lot of people are really questioning on is Coin. Coin is probably my favorite setup uh, between this and the next stock that I will read off for you guys after this. But as far as Coin goes, I will be looking at the flat bottom here at 288. It's a lot more clear in the four hour if I go here. You guys will be able to see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> you can see the low is 287.50. But most of our touches are around that 288 level. Now, some people can make the argument of maybe even getting an early entry at 290. That is exactly what I'm going to do for the stock. Um, coin is super volatile um, as far as it when it comes to having breakdowns or uh, breakouts. So it goes both ways. So you can't be really biased on both sides. When you are taking early entries on this, you really want to be careful. Um, 
So I will be, I probably will consider an early entry at 290, taking that into 288. After that, I have room down all the way to 285. So it's a pretty solid setup. Nice flat bottom at 288. I just got to hope and pray that uh, crypto doesn't make such a big move going into tomorrow, Monday morning, that the setup is already broken. So that's the only downside on this is that it, re it relies on Bitcoin specifically the most on, it, on its major move. So hopefully nothing happens on that end. And then last but not least is Microsoft here, which is, like I said, my second favorite setup between the three that I have listed for you guys. So Microsoft here, if I put this on the daily chart, you guys will see what I'm talking about is we have a $3 gap to the upside here from 429 all the way up to 432.10. Now, the high isn't really till 429.30 for where the gap actually resumes, but we currently have a flat top here or a double uh, double top here, as most of you want to refer it as, at 429. I have room up to 430. That's probably going to be my initial target here on Microsoft, but this setup is looking superb. Um, the only issue I have with this is that it's currently sitting at 423 with room up to, uh, with what, like $6 away from 429. So we still have some time to really wait for this trade to come through. But besides that, um, Microsoft, that is the levels that I'm going to be looking at with that gap. And then the double top we have here at 429. So, but like I said, guys, it's a pretty short watch list, not too much going on. Um, as even the side watch list there, the setups are pretty pretty basic pretty pretty mediocre at most just because a lot of them are relying on uh, market sentiment um since a lot of them are intraday plays and how they're going to react when we get close to this level so those levels and trades and stocks will be saved for the stock chat for stock hours so if you guys want the insider information don't forget to join the link is in the description for that but with that much more being said hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a good rest of your weekend and before you leave don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe to the youtube channel we'd really appreciate it and yeah, hope you guys take care and enjoy the week and be safe. Peace out.